Hello, uh, welcome to the lesson that covers section 15.4 under topic 15 system development of Edexcel A2 unit 3 paper. Uh, so in this year, uh, I will discuss few diagrams that are used in system design. You need to keep in mind that the syllabus has not specified uh, any uh, thorough details on these diagrams and what the expectations are. So I'll explain you some uh, common use diagrams. Uh, that you can use in the system development process and in the exam paper if they have given the notations you need to use them otherwise you can use the symbols uh, to draw diagrams that are in uh, logical design so when you don't have the symbols given please use any uh, logical symbols to represent the component or the item that you are drawing right so as usual this is the screen capture from the edexcel it specific uh, specification for section 15.4 so as per the spec uh, we need to know to draw the diagrams uh, the uh, draw the de system design diagrams which we learned uh, so far for a given scenario so let's go through uh, some diagrams we learned under unit 1 and unit 3 uh, let's first look at a data flow diagram dfd diagram uh, there are multiple levels of DFDs and I here I have shown the level 0 or also we call it as the context DFD. The example I have taken is a food ordering system. So at this level, uh, at level 0, there's only one visible process node that represents the functions of a complete system in regards to how it interacts with the external entities. So DFT diagram, we can, uh, we call it the level 0 diagram and also the context diagram, uh, context DFT. Uh, in a level 0 or a context diagram, we only, uh, the whole system we display using one uh, single uh, process. Uh, a context data flow diagram is a visual representation that uh, illustrates the scope and the boundaries of a system or a project. Uh, it depicts how it interacts with the external entities. So let's see what are the benefits of a context data flow diagram. Uh, as you can see in the previous screen, it's very simple, right? So it's clarity of scope. It provides a clear overview of the uh, system including it's the boundaries and also what are the external entities that interacts so it helps the uh, uh, stakeholders the people who are uh, interactive with this project they can understand what is included and what is not so they can easily uh, define their scope of the project and also with the DF, uh, context DFT, it's easy to communicate uh, because it serves as a communication tool between the stakeholders, designers, developers, uh, the people who are testing the project and who are the project team members, so that because uh, project managers, because it ensures everyone has uh, a good understanding because it's visible and it's clear. So it's sort of com uh, used as an easy communication tool. And then it helps to identify the external entities. Uh, it uh, because it uh, there are some external entities that interacts with the system, right? Including the users, the other systems. It could be hardware or software, any other entities relevant to the system. So it helps to identify uh, with the main system what are the other external entities. And then this helps uh, us with the system design. Uh, because it's simple to draw and it aids in system designing by providing high level view of the system's interactions. Uh, we, it can help in making design decisions and identify interfaces with external entities. So overall, a context diagram is uh, a, visual, uh, a valuable tool uh, for understanding, communicating and managing the scope and context of a system or project. Uh, uh, so it helps to contribute the success of a project. So now uh, we discuss about the level zero diagram DFT or the context DFT. Now let's see a level one DFT diagram uh, with the same example, the food ordering system. Right, so as you can see, a level one DFT is more detailed than a level zero. Uh, this is the decomposition or the uh, breakdown of the food ordering system process uh, shown in the context DFT previously. So go through the diagram and then we will introduce some of the key concepts based on this diagram. Uh, 
the food order system data flow diagram uh, example contains three processors. You can see them uh, order food, generate reports, and order inventory. And then we have four external entities and two data stores. So based on the diagram, we know that the customer can place an order. The order food process receives the order, forwards it to the kitchen, uh, uh, store it in the order data store, and store the updated inventory details in the inventory data store. Uh, the process also delivers a bill to the customer. The manager can receive reports through the generate report process, which takes inventory details and orders as input from the inventory and the uh, order data store, uh, respectively. Uh, the manager can also initiate the order inventory process by uh, providing inventory order. The process forwards uh, the inventory order to the supplier and stores the updated inventory details in the inventory data store. So uh, you can now think that we are decomposition the food ordering system into processors, the data stores, uh, so that uh, and the entities that is involved. So you can get a, a better understanding of what are the available processors, uh, what are, where do we store data, and who are involved in the process. Uh, let's see some important tips we need to follow when uh, creating DFTs. Uh, process labels should be uh, verb phrases. It's like uh, Order, order food, something like that. We have, you need to have a verb phrases. And then uh, data stores are represented by nouns. It could be uh, inventory data store, something a noun. And data store must be associated with at least a process. Uh, without a process, uh, there is no point having a data store isolated, right? And then an external entity must be associated with at least a process. If there are external entities, the purpose should be they are interacting with the system, right? So it should interact at least with one process. And the data stores should not be uh, connected to an external entity. Other Because you can understand, right? Data store, we have all the information, the valuable information. It could be uh, uh, important information. So if it is available to the external entities, it means that you are giving data files direct access to the external entity. So it has a risk and then data flows uh, should not exist between two external entities without going through the process. Uh, right, that's about the DFTs. Now let's look at uh, activity diagram. Activity diagrams uh, provide a visual representation of the sequence of uh, actions or steps within a system or a process, helping stakeholders to understand how the system uh, behaves. Uh, so this diagram is suitable for questions that ask you to draw the process flow of a situation. Here we have taken an example of a, a banking system uh, processing a withdrawal or a deposit transaction. Uh, an activity diagram has a start shown with a black circle as you can see on the screen on top there's a black circle that is the start that's how you show a start in the activity diagram and an end screen uh, uh, sorry and in uh, it shows with a black circle with a white border uh, there can be only one uh, start but there can be one or more endings each process step is uh, shown with a rectangle uh, as shown in the screen. Uh, the diamond shape is used for decision points where you can have uh, binary values. Uh, not binary, it could be even more than that where you have to take a decision. The decisions has to be, uh, yeah, most of the time that what you are getting is a binary one. Uh, but in the industry, there could be... Uh, non-binaries as well in, in when you have it binary it could be like yes or no true or false so you have to label the decision uh, uh, paths uh, with the arrow paths poking out of the decision point you also have to specify the decision as a question of the diamond like uh, uh, so in this example the decision process is uh, uh, somebody is coming to withdraw uh, so the decision is is sufficient balance is available in the account so if uh, it is yes 
then the withdrawal is allowed and uh, you can withdraw the money because there's sufficient money and if no then withdrawal is not allowed so as you can see the activity diagrams provide a visual representation of uh, complex processes workflows or system behaviors so this visual clarity makes it easier for stakeholders to understand the sequence of uh, actions or the behaviors that uh, we need to implement in the system right now let's look at a block diagram uh, example where we are asked to draw uh, data encryption and decryption using a single key uh, a block diagram is a graphical representation of a system uh, or process using blocks to represent so if you are given to if you are asked to uh, draw a, a block diagram you need to uh, draw boxes and write the words inside the boxes we usually call this at, uh, as a, a block diagram and uh, the lines the arrows uh, depicts the connections between these blocks. So it's a high level diagram that provides an overview of the system's uh, structure or behavior focusing on the relationships and interactions between uh, its components rather than their internal details. Uh, block diagrams are the most common diagrams to draw and should be your first choice in an exam question when exact details on what symbols to use and the details are not given. Uh, round edge rectangle represent inputs or outputs right you can i hope you can it's visible in the screen it's like uh, round edge rectangles are like uh, the text that has original text uh, encrypted cipher text decrypted ci original text so cipher text those are uh, round edge rectangles uh, the other rectangles represent processors uh, in this example, encryption algorithm and decryption algorithms, those are processes. So in this diagram, uh, in your left side, original text, uh, text is an input and it goes through the process of encryption algorithm and use the encryption key to encrypt and uh, the uh, it gives the output as encrypted text. Similar flow is there to decrypt. Uh, note that since this is a single key encryption it uses the same key to encrypt and decrypt you can see that there's a key in uh, in the middle and the key is used by the encryption algorithms and also the decryption algorithms because this diagram is drawn for single key encryption method right uh, next is another block diagram but for public key encryption uh, here we have to show two keys uh, because uh, one public and the other private and also the transmission of the ciphertext uh, to the receiver properly using arrows. Uh, the arrows pointing towards uh, encryption algorithm indicates uh, that the plain text input and the public key is used in the encryption process. As per the exact scenario given, you have to properly label the public or private key in the correct box if the question is about normal data transmission uh, then encryption will be using the public key of the receiver but if the question is about digital signature then the encryption will be using the sender's private key so that's why the diagram here says public or private key in both the boxes right i have mentioned private slash uh, backslash private key so that's why that difference is uh, is there right this is another diagram uh, this is a high level network diagram uh, how a hotel web application interacts with hotel staff using a computer based browser and uh, where the hotel guests are using a mobile application so this also shows how the applications are connecting with other services such as messaging platforms and social media platforms to deliver the uh, services and content uh, I'm not too sure whether this comes under system development project, but since these are some diagrams that we learn under network uh, chapter as well, so I thought of adding all the diagrams that we have drawn under unit one and unit three here. So please go through these diagrams so you will understand because I have labeled all the components. Right. Uh, 
so this is another uh, diagram which is a network topology diagram of a scenario uh, where a standalone firewall is used in the local area network uh, the, the lines indicate how the network is connecting the different computers and components uh, together uh, here's another example of a network topology diagram uh, showing a home network uh, you need not spend a lot of time drawing the images, uh, but you can simply use abstract shapes and just uh, label correctly. Uh, but connecting the components using the proper notation such as Wi-Fi or wired is important. You can see uh, you, you need to label them as well. So under system development, these are the types of diagrams uh, we can use. And this concludes the last section of the topic 15, uh, system development. Okay, so as I mentioned in the spec, uh, uh, section 15.4, that is system development diagram. So we are done with it. And uh, I'm planning to upload another video on, on how to fill a Gantt chart because I saw in some of the, in most of the papers, uh, there's an exam question on Gantt chart. So I will be uploading the next lesson on how to fill a Gantt chart, uh, hopefully by today or tomorrow. So stay tuned and subscribe and click on the bell icon so you get a notification when i upload that video okay thank you and good luck